Oh, I'm starting to get that feeling. That feeling that I was right. Alrighty, we are wasting no time here, boys and girls. Recently, we uploaded a video all about the iPhone SE 4 and why it's set to be an absolute monster of an iPhone release, but also an incredible step for Apple into truly compelling, affordable iPhone offerings. Go watch if want, if don't. Who care? We went over everything about the supposedly planned changes for the iPhone SE 4, one of those things being a complete redesign. That means a new, updated body, face ID, action button, USB-C, and so, so, so much more. Basically, it's going to be a huge deal, especially if this phone, the SE4, drops anywhere near the current price tag of the SE3, which is 429 doll hairs. And now, we have a brand new report from Marco over at Mac Rumors. Oh, Marco, I could kiss ya. The report confirms that the battery that's being used in the current SE4 test units is, wait for it, the same battery used in iPhone 14. Oh yes, yes dude, this is the best news. For those of you not following my brain here, if Apple is using the battery from the iPhone 14 in testing for the SE4, that all but confirms that the planned body for the SE4 is that of the iPhone 14. And that means that the rest of the information that we reported on regarding the SE4 is likely accurate for now. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna need to continue being very clear here that this is all pre-production information, and even though it could be 100% happening this way, right now, we could report to you tomorrow and be like, I'm ah, just kidding, Tim Cook threw away all that SE4 stuff and then pissed on it. <laughs> So, you know, keep your expectations tempered. Since we're all here and talking about Marco's report, we can at least talk about this battery being tested in the iPhone SE 4. Currently, the numbers pan out like this. The battery sitting in the currently available iPhone SE gets you a pretty small 2018 milliamp hours. And this updated battery, the same battery from the iPhone 14, will clock in at 3,279. If math is hard for you, that is a bigger number. That's a pretty big difference, all things considered, and even though the rest of the hardware we're expecting the iPhone SE 4 to inherit will need the larger battery, this change could still translate to vastly better battery life for users. Looking at you. <laughs> Yay for you. For real though, the rumored changes for the iPhone SE 4 are super compelling to me. Obviously, yeah, I'm more of a pro boy, but I will always be excited when Apple, the company obsessed with trying to deliver the highest quality products at the highest possible price you're willing to pay for them, makes moves into the, okay, how about best bang for your buck? territory. The SE devices released in the past have always felt uh, low priority for Apple, best way to put it. It felt very much like, oh, well, we have all these old parts from 10 years ago just sitting around. Let's see what we can sell back to the old people and kids. But the SE4, if this is how we're getting it, would completely flip that on its head. Just like I'm about to flip you on your head when I tell you that the government is hijacking your iPhone right now. I'll tell you about that after today's sponsor. If someone put a gun to my head and said, Quick, what's the first app that you install on every Mac that you buy? I wouldn't even have to think about it because it's Clean My Mac X every time. Clean My Mac X is the best and only app that I use to help control and maintain my Mac. They make it way too easy with features like Smart Scan, just one button that does a full scan, cleanup of junk, full malware protection powered by the Moonlock engine, and full machine speed up. All of that in just about two minutes. My personal favorite feature though would have to be Space Lens. It allows you to scan and find what is taking up the most space on your machine on any of your drives in any folder and this is a lifesaver for me because most of the time it's something just hogging up all of my space that I forgot about and definitely don't need. Get licenses right now for more than just one Mac so you can put it on multiple machines or share it with one of your friends. Use our link down in the description to get a seven day free trial and get 30% off for a limited time by using promo code front page tech. And of course, a huge thanks to our friends over at Claim My Mac X for sponsoring today's episode. 
This next part is a bit spoopy, a bit scary. It has nothing to do with the SE4 story at all, but here we are. We just learned, thanks to this story published by Reuters through an anonymous source, that unidentified government agencies and potentially US agencies are spying on smartphone users by tracking push notifications as they move through Apple's and yes, even Google's servers. Yep, uh, yeah, not... Not great. The report by Raphael Satter details that U.S. Senator Ron Wyden sent a letter to the Department of Justice letting them know that foreign officials were demanding metadata from Google and Apple. Of course, they refused. This sparked an appeal to change any policies that would prevent the discussion of this ability for push notifications to be used for tracking purposes so the public, the people, can stay informed. Apple and Google quickly jumped on the chance to give their own statements about this. Uh, shocker, they don't want to do this. Apple saying, in this case, the federal government prohibited us from sharing any information. Now that this method has become public, we are updating our transparency reporting to detail these kinds of requests. And our alphabet bros, Google, said, we share Senator Wyden's commitment to keeping users informed about these requests. Oh, okay, so that's good. At least we have the big guys on our side here. Uh, though we don't know exactly how the surveillance is being done, or for how long it has been being done for. We of course know that push notifications leave all sorts of traces through servers and that the intent seems to be to tie anonymous users of messaging apps to specific traceable Apple or Google accounts. But that's speculation and that's all we got. To top it all off, the Reuters report doesn't directly name any of the other agencies taking part in the surveillance, just that they're democracies allied to the United States. If this is making you feel kind of icky, yes, me too. The lack of specifics could be to protect the source of this information, that's understandable, that's how it works, but the fact remains that these governments want to track us more than ever. Tim Hardwick from Mac Rumors points out that Apple even directly advises app developers to not include sensitive data in any notifications and to make sure any and all data is encrypted before it's added to a notification payload. Of course, unfortunately, this puts it all sort of on the shoulders of the developers to do, which they should be doing. But as Tim also points out, metadata, you know, more generalized data about users, their devices and notifications is not encrypted. That is exactly what these government agencies are after. And that is exactly what Apple and Google don't want to give them. Jesus, I started this episode off in such a good mood. But listen, as always, we need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and our data. Being informed is the first step of that. It's 2023, almost 2024, time isn't real. The most valuable thing, the thing that governments and companies are going to want more and more, will always be our data, information about you, about me. So keep yourself safe. Use VPNs if you need to. And stop giving your emails to shady places on the internet. No, all right? That website asking you for your email in exchange for a coupon for your favorite frozen dinners, those perfectly frozen, perfectly prepared, perfectly portioned frozen delicious meals, you don't need to do that. I'm not talking about anybody in specific here. Definitely not me.